welcome to this very exciting new project. I'm rebuilding a secret bar using two of these IKEA units, two billabook cases, a fake marble worktop. It's going to pull That's out. Amazing. amazing. So this is very much the draw shot. So let's get on with our building. I'll show you the design. I want to do this in a week. Let's see. Okay, good evening. I've built the second one and they fit in perfectly. Because of the space, I did have to do a little bit of chiseling to make it all fit. But I did it and it fits. This is going to be covered. You won't see any of this, so it's fine. And then, so I had to chisel down there. Chisel, chisel, chisel. Um, but I'm doing that just because I've got to fit it in the gap and my radiator thing sticks out. So uh, you won't have to do it. If you don't do it, you will have a gap down the middle here. But the way you can rectify that is just to put a strip because it's got this overhang. You will have a bit of a gap, but you could just put a bit of strip down there. Now we're going to build the two Billy bookcases. Hopefully they fit. It's Friday morning and I have had a delivery of these very big industrial wheels that I'm going to be putting on the bottom. Okay, I've leapt ahead. Um, and not film what I did, but it was fairly simple. I've chopped off the bottoms here, very neatly, clearly, just saw them off, just so they didn't touch the ground, because I've left them on, I thought that's perfect, where it's all nice and joined into one piece to put the skirting board under that ridge. So I left that on. And all I've done with these very industrial wheels, I'll link the ones I have used, kind of the perfect height there. So all I've done, they came with some bolts and they came with screws and all sorts. I did think about putting some wood, but then it would have made it higher again. And actually this piece here is pretty solid and it's own, it's not going to, I think if you were using it every single day, this is going to have very occasional use when it's pulled out. Maybe you'd make it a bit more secure. But all I've done is I've got my no more nails out and I have, they come with massive screws, screwed in so it's solid as a rock. I went for four on each. I thought that's pretty, pretty good and it glides out perfectly. So. Okay, so I've, not quite got the billy bookcase together i've sorted out attaching it so i have screwed it basically everywhere from that side and that side and it feels really solid now and then around the back i haven't really done anything that exciting um i've just glued a strip on here just to cover the the join um and then i've sort of screwed it through the top here and underneath and it's pretty solid um I was thinking about maybe put some brackets around here, but I'm not sure I'm going to need to do it because when the top's on, that's going to keep quite solid, but just screwing it all the way in here on the inside. I've done lots of screws and across the top and just clamped it there. So it's pretty solid. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up and then I'm going to get the Billy Book cases built and then we'll move on to the next bit. Hey, it has been a week. I had a fantastic time in Vegas, but I am now back. And I'm getting on with this. Excuse that noise in the background. That is the kitten playing with an empty box. So my worktop is here. I have just cut. I did film it, but I had it on slow-mo. So this is the edge I've cut. You get some strips with it. Um, and I will obviously tidy this up. I did it with a saw, so I've got little chippy bits there. But it's basically two metres two by 65 deep, so it's way too deep. So what I'm gonna to have to do is cut quite a large chunk off about here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attach it to the top first so it's secure, and then I'm gonna use it like a great big Black & Decker workmate. Oh, this was 75 pounds, I think. So I'm gonna attach it all, and then I'm gonna try and cut it very neatly. Okay, it's been a few days, the top is on, and I think I've bought some wood this, that cutter I bought, absolutely rubbish. I ditched it and then started with a handsaw. So that's it nice and smooth with a handsaw. And this is it chopped up with that awful machine. So I'm gonna sand this all down and get it nice and straight all the way down. And then I'm gonna put some wood across the back, I think, because the strip they gave me to put on the other end is not enough. Okay, so I'm finally attaching the billy book cases. You'll notice they're upside down, that's deliberate, so that the bottom doesn't have a little raised area. I'm using these little wooden pieces just to keep it up when I'm attaching it to the wall. I'm using kitchen wall fixings. So the, the fixings you would use to put a cabinet, I'm using those. I'm then using these small pieces of wood across the top just to attach the MDF to. These can be quite lightweight. They're not structurally doing anything. It's just to hold the MDF. And I didn't want too much weight, so these are quite little thin strips I just found in my hallway. I don't know which project they were from, but they're spare. 
spare. I'm trying to recreate this kind of top on this unit, so I just needed something to attach the MDF to. I've been to B&Q and got all my bits of wood cut. So this big bit's the bit to put on the top. And I've got strips to put along the sides and across the middle piece to cover these joins here. And then I've bought some long strips as well to put across the bottom. Uh, I'll write down all the dimensions and attach it somehow in the description box so you can see what I've done on there. Now I'm going to make the curve for the top. So all I do is use this massive Emma Bridge Water. This is a cake plate for Emma Bridge Water. I think it's about 35 centimetres across. So this is a piece of the backing that I've not used from the Billy Bookcase. And I literally just score across like this. And then I will uh, very carefully cut it out. So I've used no more nails to attach all of my pieces of MDF, fairly simple. And then this corner bit is dry nicely. Don't worry about any gaps or anything. What I'm gonna do now is go around with a filler and fill in all the gaps. Uh, and then that'll be sanded down. Also gonna fill up the gaps, all the little holes at the side, I'm gonna fill those as well. I did use a bit of this pine at the bottom, because actually the bit I had cut, I felt was a little bit too big. So I used this bit of strip pine, so it actually got a nice curve on it. This is the poly filler I'm using. I'm gonna go around and do all these little holes. All the holes filled, left to dry, sanded down, and I've done a little bit of filling on the joins along the pieces of wood. I will go round after I've done my first prime actually and do a bit more filling, especially on the curves, because I just find it easier to do it with the paints on. So this is the primer I'm using, always use this one, absolutely love it, super easy to do, so I'm going to put a coat of that on right now. First coat of prime is on and I will shortly go around and do a bit more filling. But on the side here, I'm gonna actually put some pine tongue and groove that I buy from B&Q. So this is what I buy. It's, I think, about 20 quid a pack. They do it in three different lengths. You just trim them down as you want to. This is a tongue and groove cladding from B&Q. I'll link it below. Slots together really easily, and I'm just gonna put it out with some no more nails. So here we go, all put on, all attached. It was perfect, I only need to use three, so that's great. Didn't have to make any cuts going up and down. I will put a front piece on like I did uh, on my Billy Bookcase to just make the corner really nice. Okay, I'm just back from home base. I used the Dulux colour mixing service. I actually took one of these cupboard inner shelves with me and they use their machine and they have colour matched it. But I'm not going to paint the bottom, I'm just going to use it to paint the top. So the colour match hopefully will be pretty good. So I'm going to put a bit on and we'll see if it actually is the right colour. So I've got the first coat on. Oh, I think it might be slightly darker, but it's okay. I'm just playing around with some lights here. But I also picked up some wallpaper while I was in B&Q. This was £20 a roll. If you've ever seen the coal and sun tree wallpaper that's like £100 a roll, I don't know how they're getting away with doing this because it's identical, but it was 20 quid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this all across the back. I didn't want to paint it or use the stuff I've used before. So I've got more wallpaper paste and I'm very quickly going to get it up on the wall. All paper up, nice and easy. You'll notice that I've got the Billy Bookcase glass shelves. These are standard. Found them when I went in there, just to have a look around. Didn't even know they did them. I did have to chisel this off a little bit because you have to slide the glass shelves in dead straight. And with my overhang, that was a bit of an issue. It was fine. Just pop them off one side, then slid them in. So do bear that in mind. So now I'm going to put up some of the lighting. This is some fabulous lighting I bought. I'll link it below. Uh, it's flicking a little bit. It's not actually flicking in real life, but I'm going to run it all the way around the edge. Good morning, it's the following day and let me zoom out. Last night I started putting the lighting on. Let me switch it on. So last night I started putting the lights on and I ran out. I need exactly another set. So they have just arrived. Luckily I could get them next day before 12 o'clock from Amazon. So here they are. It's a really good set actually because it all comes apart and you also get these blanking plates. So when I went across here, I could use this. And there's a couple that you get about 
a few really long ones, which I used at the top across here. And then you get some short ones. So the instructions are fairly simple. Uh, you just, they just, just attach like this. They've got these little tiny sort of bits on the end that they click into like that. And then another bit's got prongs. Anyway, so these are the lights, got another set. So I've gone up the sides, blanking plate across the top, down, and then a little blanking plate, then up. Dun, dun, dun. I wish I'd have done this actually earlier on because I have had to pop these fronts off. But also what I've discovered is I prefer it when it's stuck. So I've stuck them here. So they're actually facing that way. We'll attach that in a minute. So I went to B&Q and bought some extra pieces to make these bits wider. So it actually points that way. Because when I put them, if you put them around the side, it's absolutely blinding. If, like, if you'll study the side. So having them facing the back just lights it up. It's really good. It's got lots of different settings. Uh, it's got like, when they're all on, I'll show you the different settings. So yesterday I attached some wider pieces. They didn't have the width I wanted. The widest I could get was about 4.9 centimetres. So I had some little strips here and added them together uh, to make one bit. So this is now, this is now seven centimetres wide. And then I put a tiny bit of filler yesterday, slopped some filler around again, because I wasn't happy with the joins up here. So I've got to give that a little, very light sand. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the rest of the lights on, uh, going up around here like that. And once I've done that, I've got to sand down all these bits reattach it so to pop it off again i think i would do the lighting before i framed it um because i've popped this front off here just pulled that out so i can run it across here so i'm going to just pop this off and then i'm going to put it all back so once i've got the lights on and i've given it a sand i'll show you what it looks like good morning we actually used the bar the other day even though it wasn't finished let's just turn the lights on so i'm going to get the coving on I'm going to give this a prime and a final coat. I think the coving at the top will really transform it. Get that done and then it will be finished. Now I'm just putting the coving on, the job that I hate most there. And I, I don't know if I've already shown you, but I buy these corner bits ready cut and then I've glued it using um, coving filler. It's called lightweight coving adhesive and filler. So I do the corners, get them on, a bit of a cheat and then I'll cut um, a long piece hopefully that'll fit basically glue the corners together and I'm going to be painting this the same color as this so it kind of matches how my kitchen is here all matches so yeah once it's all on I'll show you what that looks like right I've been working on the back as you can see so what I've started to do I'm really angry about this so you can see this is a lovely straight line straighter this was the machine I used it was terrible I've sanded it and I've tried to clonk it back as best as I can so I'm a little bit annoyed about that but it's lovely and straight here definitely use a saw but what I've decided to do I was going to put some wood on it but then I thought I'm just going to use some of my filler so I very lightly on these bits here I've just put a little coat so I let it dry give it a little sand and I can just paint it so it just seals the back so I've done that all the way along here and then just down here then what I've done here is I've cut a bit of the back out and then this is a little off cut always keep little off cuts like this so handy that I got from when I got the frame cut so I've put a piece across there and then I've glued a piece across here uh, and before I did that I put some nails in and screwed it to the piece just so this I mean it's a bit of movement but you see I put some nails in there to the shelf so it's solid uh, so that's not gone really hard. So when you're in the bar, you've got access at the back. So I'm going to keep the bottles in here. So then also you can access from the front as well. So that'd be good. Not that we've got that many bottles. Because um, it's not very... That's empty, that one. So any bottles of drink we'll put in here. So actually, when you use the bar, you've got this area to put some bits in. So I think that was sort of handy. Um, and I've started filling. I've got some sanding and stuff to do. Then here, I put these corner bits on which I'll link, which I did over on my other bits as well, just this corner bit. I'm still doing the coving. Don't enjoy doing that. So I've done that edging there. Um, I'm happier now how this sort of bit is, because I filled it again to make it a bit smoother. So it's just had a really light coat, but we're getting it. It's got to have another coat on there. But I'm happy how this has turned out. So I'm going to get this all done and all the edges painted. Then I've ordered some self-adhesive wallpaper that I'm going to put on the back here, like a really 
like a leafy pattern not the same as this just so to cover all this actually and then i'll probably give this another coat just the back's really neat so that's what i've been doing for the last two days i'm going to carry on i'll show you when the wallpaper okay, I've had a delivery it's arrived i bought this self-adhesive wallpaper i'll pop a link below it came in different lengths i went for i think three meters hopefully it's enough so i'll get it out and we'll have a look so i unraveled it it's got a just a sticky peel off back so it says it's wipe clean with a damp cloth so that's probably perfect in case any drinks get spilled down it so i'm going to start measuring up and get it attached around the back i'm pretty pleased how the back's looking this morning like this this end that i did this actually when i got it out of the box from ikea it had these little dinks which is a little bit annoying so what i'm going to do I'm going to paint this very neatly and then some green and hopefully you won't notice this end because that was annoying but it's definitely worked just a bit of uh filler on there on the ends just to seal it off and then i'll paint that so that's neat so that's the back and i've painted all the bits you can see in the green so hopefully it'll just neaten it up uh, so i'm going to get sticky and let's see what this looks like and if it actually sticks and if i need some easy noble nail well that was super easy it's just like sticking on a big sticker so that's enough of me showing you that i'm going to crack on with the last few bits and i'm going to show you the finished result and talk you through it this is what it was like before only a few weeks ago and i'm delighted to have finished so let me show you what it actually turned out like and here we are we are finished i am super happy with it so here it is my dresser i've had a couple of people that walked in to the house that haven't seen the house for a while and they went wow where did you get that from and i said i made it from ikea stuff so here it is my billy bookcase hack i'm very happy with it super happy with it the only thing i'm not happy with a couple of things i'm gonna be honest with you the color this color match is rubbish to the point where I didn't finish painting the coving because I'm going back to home base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these door fronts because I took a shelf. The shelves are slightly darker, I think. So I'm going to try again. Let's do it again because it's not very good. Uh, so we'll get that and I'll give that. So I'll give this whole area another coat. It's actually coming up darker on the camera. It's not as dark, but it does look a lot darker on the camera. It's just not right. So I'm going to go and get that colour mix in a little 250ml pot and paint over, but that's fine. That's easy. I love the worktop, that works really well. A couple of niggles, you'll see a little wire sticking out there. That's because the manufacturer of these lights at the time of filming this are out of stock on all the extender pieces because I want to run an extender underneath and it will go flush down the wall. So it's kind of coming out here and just sort of hanging like that. So that's why that's sitting there because I don't want to crush it with the thing sliding in. So I'm waiting for that to happen, that's fine. I love the lights, they come with two controllers where you can turn them off and on very easily and you can put them on a timer, you can have them on heart pounding mode, you can have it on disco um, or you can just have it on normal. Um, and actually what the one I prefer in the daytime is probably on the 25. It's not flicking in real life, the camera's making it flick. Uh, so let's put it back on 100%, so that's full on that one I think. So I've got two controllers and I'm gonna put some Velcro and I'm gonna keep them on the side work for both so you just do that and do that so, so the lighting was really good definitely around the side facing back really like that i'll link everything that i use including these fabulous lights that i bought and once all these extender bits are in stock i'm going to use them um on my billy bookcase there other things the the back turned out really well i'll show you that in a minute and i'll put it out and show you this how that all works but just as that as you come in to this room it just matches and I'm actually also sure about the glass shelves to start with but actually it kind of makes it a bit different from what I normally do with those shelves and it makes it a bit more kitcheny but yeah I, I do I do like it so let me pull out the front and I'll show you what it looks like as the bar the bar pulled out I do push it to the side slightly uh, but there's loads of room as you come in and go around the back I'm really happy how the back turned out this stick on stuff is fab and then I've got the super storage area if you wanted to you could make four of these at the top you could make it all like it if you wanted to but I kind of did it like that 
excuse this little mark on the side. I accidentally tried to use some different screws to secure the doors a bit better and they came through. So I've got to cover and sand that, but I love it. We've got a huge amount of space. Super happy how it turned out. I really, 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 I'm very happy. My husband loves it. We've got a big party in February. So this will be the main bar area. Um, and I love it. So do let me know in the comments what you think. I think this is very much a work in progress. There's lots of different ways you can do it. And as I say, across this bottom here, I haven't put anything because the skirting ball was really thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I think I'm gonna put some really thin pine across it and somehow do some sort of detail. If I do that and change it, I'll add some information or some pictures on my Instagram to update you. But that's the only thing I haven't done yet because I just didn't, it was too clumpy with the skirting board. So that's the only thing that's not done. But as for the rest of it, I'm super happy and I'm very excited that it's done and finished. So thank you for watching. Please do hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button and please give me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're going to have a go, we could change it up, do something similar. I've really enjoyed it and I'm about to go upstairs and start on a new PAX IKEA wardrobe. So subscribe so you don't miss that. But that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you on the next video.